morning everyone what's good i hope you guys are having a fantastic morning starting out and we're ready to go ahead and start again i'm thinking you know what let's try to fix that bleeder bolt because i don't know if this is new wet or what but it does feel like it's still kind of yeah it feels kind of wet to me so i'm kind of worried that there is still probably a leak here but let's go and find out for sure okay let's go and take this off all right one good thing about this cover it definitely secures everything uh, it's a nice hold on it, so I'm growing into this guy. First, I wasn't sure about him, how thick he was and everything. But I guess once you go thick, you might not go back. <laughs> there we go. Let's go and get this gun covered. And also, APM is actually going to help me a little bit on uh, some of the... Pretty much to kind of get the remote start to work. So, look forward to that as well today. So, we'll find out what we can do for our meantime right now. I think we got, still got a lot of stuff up our sleeves. Uh, he does anyway. I'm not sure anymore, but we'll find out. Um, our dashboard looks good. We're at zero mileage right now, brand new. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to go ahead and try to see where our leak is coming from, if it still is. And we can see if we can apply some sealant tape. These guys right here from our air compressor. So we got air compressor tool here. I didn't guys show you guys this yesterday. I got it from Lowe's. So hopefully we can, uh, I think it's 100... 50 PSI or something like that, max or something like that. I can't remember it. So it's going to be awesome. We're going to be able to compress our throttle sleeves out of here. Booyah. Hopefully that's how it works. But for the meantime right now, let's figure out how to even get our uh, brake fluid from not dripping, right? So it's still showing a little mark here. So let's find out where that mark is again. Again, everything's pretty much... Uh, replaced already, so we want to see what's the hold up on it. All right, so I'm gonna rip two sheets out here cleanly, make sure they don't have any marks on them ahead of time. Okay, so here we go, dry as a dry as a booger. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just gonna go over where I think maybe I see a little bit lightness of no, it could be a shadow, but let me just make double check. Ugh. Let's see here. Going back. You guys see anything that I do? No, I don't see anything. These are just shadow. So that's pretty darn dry. We we'll just have to monitor that guy right there. You know, he's kind of it's kind of still soft. It may be absorbing all the oil from the previous cement that was in here. I mean the previous stain that was in there, maybe. I don't know. But let me go ahead and keep wiping, okay? So it's still. Wait, did I just get wet here? Look at this. Oh, because I put it that but that's what I get for playing around okay so let's go and get another dry piece right here there's a dry piece so let's check this one out let's see if we squeeze in the oil at all okay so far Oh, I'm getting a little bit. So there's a little bit coming out of the Bonjo bolt area. <clears throat> so let me see if I can get any on here. Let's see if we can go from here. Okay, I don't get, which is a good thing. I don't get, I'm sorry, I'm not getting any uh, kind of fluid on the Bonjo bolt area. Which is excellent. So let me get another dry piece again. Just want to double check my statistics here. Okay, so nothing here, correct? So here we go. Let's go back to this little wrap around. Now this has been vacuumed already. It's been sitting there for a day. So let's see. Yep, let's see. I'm getting a little bit of wetness right there. So that's actually coming from here. So that's probably why it's not sealing that well. Because of our bonjo. So we're going to go and try to get that resolved. <coughs> so here we go. <coughs> so the leak is coming pretty much from the uh, the Bonjo bolt leader assembly. So uh, for whatever reason, I'm going to actually uh, just to make sure we're going to check it. Um, also, all these areas here, it doesn't seem like they're having any problems here. It's just that one leak area right there. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to put this guy in there. And let's see if he will actually seal it. So we're going to try to use some threaded uh, sealing tape. 
So, uh, there we go. And we're going to go and open this guy up. And now we're going to have to bleed the whole thing all over again. Well, sort of all over again. Not too bad. But it's better safe than sorry, right? Let's see if I can open this in a clean manner here. It doesn't come two pieces, or does it? Oh, it does. Look. There we go. <clears throat> sort of, I guess. Let's see here. I cut open from the side or the bottom, whichever. Probably the, the bottom here it seems to be better. Okay, so let me go and cut this guy open. There we go. Get our finger in there. We can just get the right slot. I like to be able to keep them back in there when needed. All right, so all we need is a tape for right now, anyways. We'll need the whole thing, but for right now, I just need the tape. So let's let the tape fall, shall we? Come out, come out, come out. Oh. A little sharp, isn't it? Oh. These guys are pretty sharp. There we go. Got him out. Nice. There we go. We even got a tire uh, or air pump thing. So that's pretty cool. Look forward to using all that. And I guess this one here is our insert to get into the wedge of the, hopefully our throttle cable. I don't know, maybe attach it to this guy here. Yeah, it looks like this is an adapter for it. So you probably attach it to this guy right here. Never used one of these before, period. Never used the air compressor. Only time I used the air compressor before was actually going to like you know, a gas station or something to pump my, you know, air in my tire and stuff like that, but never my own air compressor at home so we'll find out how that works okay so <clears throat> then we're gonna put this guy back in here that we won't lose him we we'll also put a little nut there back in there as well we won't lose that guy and there it is here's the tape so we're thinking of taping this sucker here uh, even though it's a brand new setup unfortunately uh, the bungee bolt is not brand new but still I think it's either defective bungee bolt and old one or the fact is this guy here. So we're gonna see if we can use some sealant tape on this guy here and see if that worked properly. I hate to take it off without squeezing the brake lever, of course. Uh, so we're gonna to have to do the same setup there we did last time. Um, pretty much bleed out the brake lever. So we'll put a hose and everything connected to a bottle. Here's our bottle. And hopefully that'll hold the fluid in there. Because again, brake fluid is very harsh. So I don't know how it's gonna do with just a regular uh, we call it Teflon tape. Okay, so we got that right. I, I use the light bottle. It's always easier to use these lighter bottles if you're going to do it. Uh, it's just because compacting reasons. It's just so much easier. So I'll just go ahead and bring our little... Where is our tuber? Mm -hmm. have to do this all over again. This is part three of... <laughs> fixing your brake line or slash tube, right? So we'll find out to see if actually Teflon tape will actually help us. We're hoping it does, but we'll see. All right, so we're going to put this guy in here that we made our slit somewhere. Can't even see it. It's such a fast slit here. I think this is right here, right? Yeah. Ooh, that thing is a prick. I think it almost cut me or something in my thumb area. I think I cut it right here. There we go. Just gotta get in there, have it hook. You're good. Okay, we're gonna do a little small tie strap here again. Um, should we tie strap it now? Yeah, we can. We're actually just gonna go ahead and try to bleed it. So we don't have to tie strap it right now, but we will open this, but we also wanna get a little safety can to catch all the, the fluid coming out. And then we'll also have to put a tie strap uh, back into our little thing there. So we'll have to do that. Uh, so we're going to do that right now. So we'll have two tie straps, one to start it with and one to end it with. So we'll bring both of them out right now. Okay. So before we break it, we're going to go ahead and break it then. And then we're going to squeeze this all the way and then I'm going to reach over and get my tie strap. So here we go again, the whole setup, whole shebang. Just going to get a little apron. And we're going to try to see if we could fix it with that sealant tape. So here we go. A little piece fell here. 
All right, we gotta rip the little bib off of it. Hopefully we have enough brake fluid to tap as well on top of that. <laughs> so we got a few things here. So there we go, let's get started. The sooner the better. And that way we know we tried all our exhausting to fix our bonjo bolt, huh? That or even just get a new bonjo bolt. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. So what was the, the size 2.5? Little ratchet take that. We need a our little uh, 516. I keep saying that for the uh, sockets, 5 8 for the spark plug socket. It doesn't take a 516, which is way too small. This is actually a spark plug socket. I sometimes mix the two together, 5 8 which is the spark plug size, which is way bigger than actual the 516 that we used to uh, turn our uh, pretty much our, our bleeder bolt. So let me go and find that socket again for the bleeder bolt. Should be somewhere right around. Just make sure we find them. Now this is the ratchet. We don't need the ratchet open. There it is. Right They're hanging out. All right, so this is pretty much it. That's all the wall we'll need, and we'll need our fluid, of course. Uh, not much left in there, only an ounce. So we actually run out of this one. I'm just going to go ahead and try to see if I can, you know, I should have bought those Bonjo bolts from the auto parts store, even though I had a bad experience with them. Remember, they broke off. But the thing about that, it had like a special Teflon coating there. So that might work well for us. Who knows? In fact, I should go there to the auto parts store right now and take care of that guy. Should I? I mean, it's better than taping. What do you think? Because those things are made specially for the idea of sealing, right? And these guys here might be different. Even though I had a bad experience, remember one of them broke off on me. So let's see. Let's see, let's see. If I go there now, I can actually maybe get also another uh, bottle of this guy here. Just in case. Or do we really want to play around and try and use this tough one? Because I don't know if it's a resistance to break fluid, right? Because the other ones are like Viton Teflon sealed. They're not just regular... Because brake fluid, again, eats through everything, right? So even though this has a little bit to hold it, it's probably not going to be enough. So let's go and do that. I'm going to go ahead and go to the auto parts store real quick here. Is our auto zone or something? And try to see if I can find that uh, bleeder bolt there to get this guy fixed. All right, Michael from NCY store. I'll be right back. This is Michael from NCY store. I'm back. I got some uh, new brake fluid here from AutoZone. You can see here it's brand new. We're not going to open it yet. We're going to try to tap and finish off the... The one that we just started with so we're good with this guy here but another thing is i was thinking of using the teflon tape that i realized you know what brake fluid eats everything up anyway so it might not even be a good choice to use teflon tape here so i decided to go get and but you remember our original one that we tried last time from the auto parts store and it broke off i because i think it's my fault for one thing i kind of over threaded it i mean i was trying to get all the thread flushed in there because i thought this was original like that but if you look at this one right here see that one the thread, even though it's tightened, it still doesn't actually come all the way out. Now I'm thinking I could easily re-tighten it some more maybe. I mean, I can further, you know, tighten it some more. Maybe that'll help stop the leak. But look, I can almost, oh wow, I can see it right now. Look at that, it's not even, not even hiding his nasty body right now. Look, check this out. Look at that. See, I can see it coming out. So what I did was I went to the auto parts store and I tried to get that same bleeder bolt again, but this time we'll be smart about it. We won't try to over tighten it once it goes in a little bit and so, and I realized that actually that bleeder bolt there that I got last time that you saw broke off from my other video, uh, is actually a good one because it actually has what's called a, a quick check valve that actually allows you to actually just kind of loosen it where you don't have to retighten it back because it doesn't allow fluid to go back inside of it. So it's kind of neat because that, that ball bearing that I was trying to, what do you call that? You know, drill bit out to reverse it out because I broke it off. But this is part number right here. So you guys ever considered the before one? I haven't retried it again yet, but I'm thinking how it actually secures is if you look at bleed, a bleeder bolt, See if I can get a resolution on that guy. Okay, so if you look at it right here, see where the hole is? It's actually uh, not on the incline as I thought it was, it's just right there, but it has a little, you know, more of a more of indent spacing in there to be able to have the hole there, right? So what I'm thinking is maybe because of it's shallow, it's actually going this way or here. Here we go. Alright. So we're gonna do Oh, 
Okay, so here we go. So what I'm thinking here, is the fact is that it's even though this is more shallower, right? The one here, but it has a little kind of so much. It's like special seal in here. I don't think it's just Teflon tape alone, but it's some kind of Teflon. But this is not what really prevents it from leaking, right? It just prevents it from dust getting into it. So this is it right here. It says it helps restore break proper arbitrary corrosion resistance for long lasting direct replacement manufacturer strict engineered brake bleeder screw system and it has something like a valve check and that's what makes it a little bit costly it's like eleven dollars ninety nine cents so it's incredibly expensive so each one was like almost five bucks right so I have it on order here just in case as a backup from AutoZone so eventually when they get in we'll get stock and this is the one that comes with the GY6 one. Um, it doesn't have a valve check, meaning that brake fluid can flow in and out unless you tighten it down where it just smacks down in there. So it's once this compacts all the way right here, that when it seals it, right? I'm sorry, once it compacts it right here where the cone is. So when it compacts it where the cone is, it'll stop the flow from going upward. See, it goes from the inside like this and it flows upward and then onto the hole and then back out to here. So what we're trying to do is we're just kind of concerned that maybe this guy right here, he's not deep enough, meaning he's not, you know, He's not like narrow enough for it to actually clog the, the hole there from our brake assembly to actually close up. So we're gonna find out, like for instance, this is how it goes in there like this. You can see here, this is the one that's already in there, but I'm gonna take one from the outside so you can see how far it goes. So it goes like almost like right there, right? So it closes and clogs up right there. See that? See that, it clogs up right there. And it doesn't allow it to, you know, inject fluid out anymore. We need it. The purpose of having a brake bleeder bolt is to get air out of the brake assembly. That's the only reason why it's almost there for you. You can't do it through here, unfortunately. However, what I did was I found another solution. I think it's a solution. This is actually a Loctite brand. I didn't realize Loctite might make this. So Loctite makes something to actually, um, here it goes, thread sealant. And it's actually, look at this, automotive, grade for fuel fittings, oil and coolant lines break and steering fittings prevents leakage and threaded metal fittings up to 400,000 Fahrenheit which we're not going to worry about the heat most part we're just worrying about to make sure it can actually tolerate the you know the brake fluid because it's really corrosive it can eat through almost anything so and it doesn't really need time to cure at all if you look at it right there it creates like a little rubber thing so what we'll do is we're thinking we probably want to put it near as possible not to the whole area but like right there, we'll start the first level thread. We don't need to put all of it, you know, just a little bit in the front. And then when we drill it in, or not drill it in, but when we screw it in, we should be able to get it fit properly all in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to back this guy out. And then we're going to touch him up with some of this guy. Now, since he doesn't need time to cure, he might be safe just to put on top of, you know, of course, there's going to be brake fluid on top of the threads because there's no way of us, you know, drying it up because there's more coming, right? So we're going to do our best to see if we can get this guy in there, smashed in there with the threads. And hopefully he'll be able to, um, you know, do his job and just help seal a little bit of the tip area here. So we're gonna put, we're gonna start the thread right here. We'll apply it at the, at the forefront as possible. Maybe even not even all the way to the front. Maybe just save enough room there. We'll apply it right here, right? And then we'll bolt it in there. <clears throat> I think we're gonna get at least half thread in there anyway, right? So you're gonna see how much thread again We're gonna be able to probably use that sealant there So let me so let's check this out here Kind of give it a little eyeball measurement. Okay, so we're gonna get about a centimeter of thread in there So we might as well make sure we get that that sealant somewhere around a centimeter from the start until it ends So we just don't want that that sealant to go inside here and then create some problems So we might want to save one thread here just to make sure that we don't go all the way to this front thread because again when it, when it smashes uh, uh, even though we're turning forward it's going to yank some of the the sealant to the other area so we're just going to put a strand right there in the initial part so if you look at this guy right here instruction wise um you can see here hi you're going to school you got chocolate yeah. chocolate I like, yeah, I like the chocolate. you like chocolate uh that chocolate easter egg no i'm playing chocolate <laughs> Okay, so I think of this one here is we're gonna clean and dry the parts using Loctite Premier number one. Need the well, I'm reading instructions right now. 
Need the two before in use, whatever that means. Need it? I guess we nip it, right? We have to open it. And three, apply turn product. Please do not be applied to all threads. Assemble parts and tighten to recommend torque. Note, lock tight to thread metal fitting is not recommended for use for plastic or rubber. All right, so it's not. So it's metal. This, I think this is pretty much metal, but however the housing, it could be aluminum. But let's find out. <clears throat> We're gonna use our little magnet here. There it is, see that? It's stuck. So it's pretty much, there it goes. It's metal to me. So that's good to know. All right, so we're gonna get started. Uh, we got a little cap there, we're gonna use this guy. Again, as a backup, maybe this guy will come if we decide to go further, if it still leaks the next day. So we'll monitor that. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and get this all ready. Again, this is the Loctite tape that I was gonna use for, but I don't think it'll be resistant enough to uh, oil and stuff like that, mainly for use for plumbing, right? So we'll leave that alone for right now. And we'll bring our brake fluid here just in case we need to open him up. In case this guy isn't enough to finish the job. I'm thinking he should be fine. We're just going to open enough for us to be able to tap him out. So we'll find out. Let me put my keys. Okay, let's go and get this guy cracked open. I hate to do this again, but it's better to do it now than sorry. And he's already starting to leak out quite a bit more. Oh, look at that. He is just, there you go. It's like he creates an interlock wedge on his own. All right. All right, here we go. Look at that spill already. Let me go ahead and try to bring it a little bit more forward. Yeah, it gets messy dealing with brake fluid. Can you see understand how this thing can just wedge in and eat? Now this guy wants to play stucco. I think we have to kind of fill a certain wear. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, I'll have to screw him in. And then try to figure him out. God, they're so tight in there, I guess. All right, so here we go. Screw it in. There we go, look at that, I can take them off now. But the minute I use this to take them off, he doesn't almost want to come off. Oh, sorry, brake fluid's just inherently messy. All right, so there we go. All right, let's see if I can take him off. It wasn't that much of a hard spin. There we go, got him off, amazing. Didn't think I would have. Okay. We're gonna bring it back to our little stash there. There we go, look at it, it's very much topped off. All right, so let's do this. We're gonna use this cardboard and we're probably gonna get Put new cardboard after this is done. Okay, we got a little brake line here. We'll prep this guy open so we can prepare to do what we need to do with him. But first we need to bring the rubber hose. Uh, well, first of all, you need to unscrew this all out. It's not really too, nothing to screw. But it just seems like he wants to get stuck on his own there. All right. There we go. Put that guy in there. See, this is dry, or sort of. We just need this plastic guy here. He's gonna be coming back up there with us. Make sure that it doesn't contaminate or create a geyser. This is nice and clear though. Look at that, you can see right through it. So there's no contaminate there. All right, so let's go and open this guy and get ready. Uh, we'll make sure we dry the brake uh, bleeder as much as we can when we pull them out. I mean, we'll do the best we can. It's gonna be a little tricky. And maybe we can get away with not having to put a tie strap, we'll see. But I think the tie strap helped us prevent that, that 
rocker arm from going. But I don't know what. You know what? We probably need to keep the open one because we need to tighten all the way, right? So he's not going to just fall loose. He's going to be tightened all the way. So we'll probably have to keep it open anyway. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get this guy open. Because he's pretty much going to be the, the one going to help us or not. Let's we'll find out. Oh, there's one that's a little bit open here. All right, so here we go. Gonna get this guy open. I'll try to keep him in the original package. Oh, hopefully I don't. <laughs> you can easily slice the tube, really. That razor blade was pretty darn sharp.